Hello and welcome back to the Everything Canada Soccer Podcast. Your host, Jordi, as always, with the two brilliant guests, Felipe and Jamal. How are we doing, boys? Doing good. Good, doing good. You? Just just, li- just saying that, I don't know why, but it kind of came to mind. It'd be good to have a, a, a female podcast goer, especially because today we're talking about the, uh, the women's side, the women's game, which is... Yeah. Growing exponentially, and if you want to hear more about it, really no one else is reporting about it. So stay on this page because I'll tell you, I have great connections with the women's side, probably better than you, whoever's watching. I'm not trying to have a go at you, but I do have some decent connections, and I know a lot about the the women's game. So follow, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. But let's get into it by first talking about the women's league that's coming now were any of you two expecting any announce before the rumor started happening like the day before it was announced were any of you expecting a women's league to even pop up no not right now no but um mm-hmm. i do think with all the momentum from obviously winning winning the uh, olympics and um the the just the, the 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 men's world cup as well the 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 timing was couldn't have been better you know, announce it during mm-hmm. the World Cup. Um, and it's nice to see all the former um, uh, players trying to get involved. So uh, former Canada midfielder Diana Madison is doing uh, trying to get funding for a company called Project 8. Um, mm-hmm. And she's doing it with a business partner and uh, a friend of hers who works at TSN, who's kind of helping out with the media. Um, so it's good to see players get involved like that at a semi grassroots level, almost, you know, people yeah. who are involved with the game, people who kind of have the, the, the corporate side and the media media side, uh, mm-hmm. get in on it. And it's just interesting to see how all the funding will sort of come to the structure. Like you said, um, when we were discussing a little earlier, um, Jordy is, there's going to be like an Eastern and Western conference. So Similar to the CPL, but different. Mm-hmm. Maybe Felipe can sort of uh, expand on that a little. Yeah, no, I, I feel like uh, uh, it is a, an interesting concept. Um, overall, like, what was what is the name of the other leagues? Not NWSL, which has no yeah. Canadian teams. Yeah. Uh, I've heard from back, it's like, like we, we do have quite a few of the Brazilian players for national team playing for, like, Orlando Pride and a few of the other mm-hmm. NWSL teams. So I would be expecting more of like a franchise in Toronto or something like that for NWSL mm-hmm. rather than announcing a league. But having a league, it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, I think it has a lot of positive things. And I think, it, it, you know, it has, of course, to prove themselves. Uh, CPL has been doing a decent job. But, Jordi, you were mentioning that before. This league has a high potential of being even more successful, mm-hmm. especially because... The, the, the women's uh, uh, soccer side of things has had more investment and in infrastructure in Canada than the men's side. Uh, we see more passion than on the field. Yeah. yeah, there's more interest as well, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and also splitting the conferences that could help, logistically speaking, clubs to invest less money in transportation. So if you have two, three, four clubs in Alberta, a couple in Saskatchewan, a couple in Manitoba, BC, those can be sometimes even bus rides where you have to play, you know, East Coast, you will be you will be have to to travel by plane. Yeah, um, that itself should be able to get the league kick started with some more clubs, and then eventually the best ones get to a playoff. Like I, I like that concept. I think mm-hmm. it has everything to succeed. Yeah, uh, but I'll let you take the mic, Jordy, because I know you're you are the experience, like you said it. But <laughs> just to add to what you said, it if we have any any you know person involved in women's soccer if any woman's like you said it'd be better than listening to three guys talking about that yeah. hit us up send us a message maybe what's can, what's going to be really interesting you know, one, one maybe we can substitute point. while we're going on vacation or something you know can one, take the mic one, one real quick point is um mm-hmm. the broadcasting deal i'm interested to see how that pans out because that'll mean money right. for the the teams uh yeah, and, and how exactly. that sort of gets the the basically the profit sharing how that structure will work out so i'm really really going to be we're all going to keeping an eye on that so yeah like Trudy said subscribe, stay tuned we'll, we'll keep everyone up to date on on what's been going on on the the women's women's league in canada yeah 
honestly, I think I, I actually believe it has better potential at the, at the current moment, time of speaking, I think it has better potential than the Canadian Premier League. And it's because I think it all starts with the Western and Eastern Conference. Growing up in Canada, hockey is a thing, the NHL. West Conference, East Conference, any North American sport, it's mostly like that besides maybe like the NFL and other sports that I don't know of. So right right off the bat, it's familiar. It's a Western Conference, and I'm guessing the top two play each other in each division, in each conference, and then eventually have a, a final together just like the NHL, NBA, all like that. A so right there, kind of thing. Exactly. And so that makes it more able, it makes it more brandable, for lack of a better word, for like a TSN or Sportsnet to even pick it up or even a CBC rather than a one soccer because it's something that is familiar to just your average person. Mm. Because let's be honest, we're very passionate about this sport, but we are the 0.1% in Canada by far. Like we don't just like, we took like, no one has a Defoe Jersey. You know what I mean? No one has. <laughs> I, I always like, thought that no one really has Porto Glad or like, I'm that even, out. I lived in the Island and I have a Pacific FC scarf. No one else does that unless they're local and barely anyone does it that way. So that's why I think, I think Christine Sinclair, who's at the head of this along with Diana Matheson right there, you have two players that every little girl knows or every, I guess maybe probably like my age, they know know who Christine Sinclair is, right? So there you go. There's one person that's already familiar. And then you combine that with conferences. I just think that they've done it in such a better way than the CPL. I mean, I go into comment sections all the time about like the for the broadcasting rights with the CPL. Everyone says, I don't want to watch one soccer or what's one soccer. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's be more traditional, basically. But yeah, more, more traditional, traditional, right? More familiar. And, and not only that, man, it's just here. Here's just me talking, just like, just like, just Jordan talking. It freaking sucks. Like, even when they have good connection, it's not even HD. Like, how would. We're in 2022, almost, we are, sorry, I'm on a, I'm on a rant here. We are like 11 days, 10 days away from 2023 and we can't even watch the CPL in HD. <laughs> like, it's laughable yeah. sometimes, man. So if, if, to wrap it all up, if Christine Sinclair and Diana Matheson can keep making this brandable and familiar and comfortable with your average viewer and get it on like a TSN or Sportsnet, then it's Eve, it's going to surpass the CPL in a matter of a couple of years. I mean, especially with the Women's World Cup next year as well. Coming mm. out of a pandemic, so many yeah. more people are watching. Coming out of a brilliant World Cup that Canada was in as well from the men's side, there's so much momentum going into it. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's much harder for the CPL to make out of it too, right? Like, think about it, how competitive is men's soccer. How many, how many guys play MLS that won the World Cup for Argentina? How many? Probably zero. Yeah. I might be wrong. But it's probably zero. I think the best Argentinian MLS is Alvarez. That, that is a lot of Argentinians in MLS. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying yeah. all national team that won this World Cup, none. Now, yeah. take the Olympic Games from Canada. How many play the North American Women's League? Half. I don't know. Good amount. Is, I would say at least a couple players. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I know we have quite a few players playing in England, in France, playing yeah. Champions League level for women's. I get it. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, the NWSL is a standard for women's league. MLS is not a standard for men's league for international yeah. soccer. Meaning that, for example, a lot of Brazilians that play Olympics and women's uh, national team, they play on North American women's league. So Canada, for that continental connection, it has a potential too because the NWSL, it's probably 10 years old. It's not a big, like, it's mm-hmm. not a league that's that old. So if they're having half of a team that's winning Olympics in World Club or World Cups, uh, you know what I mean? It's yeah. much easier to make it. You know sponsors what I mean? Sponsors love that. Than... The sponsors yeah. will love that. So I feel like the potential is also because of that. It's because women's soccer is experiencing a mass growth right now that yeah. it never happened before. That boom happened before in men's soccer. So mm-hmm. right now you got to like... You know, think out of the box and be edgy. And I think sometimes MLS tried to do that in the past with Beckham, Ibrahimovic, Drogba, like players like that. Yeah. But it's tough to keep the consistency of that quality level and keep bringing in that, especially with a lot of rules that are in place there. So I feel like that is what's going to dictate the future of this league too. It's like, of course, the brand and the marketing deals, having a a Sinclair as the face of the league. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But I also think bringing top talent right away, which is aff affordable at the woman level if they have the proper investment and they can yeah. get that going. And is, it is attractive. Canada is an attractive country. If you're an Argentinian player, Brazilian player playing first league in the, those countries, yeah. you're definitely not getting compensated like men's soccer. In Canada, you have better quality of life, better healthcare infrastructure. So in the end of the day, it is better for them as a profession. You know what I mean? Because when we get to women's level, we also have to talk that not a lot of them are millionaires. So it's not, it's not like men's soccer. A lot of them make that as a career. Like they have to think about what is better for my family, what is better financially, right? Yeah, yeah. Like like that's almost a, a whole different topic, though. No, yeah, but Canada yeah, League yeah. brings hey, a lot of potential. Yeah, that, that's though. a touchy subject, Felipe. <laughs> no, no, it's not about like that. It's because a Brazilian player leaving Brazil to come to Canada to the CPL is not attractive. He can get paid much better going to second, no, third yeah, division. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, 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 and for a woman's soccer, that, that's that, not the case. The Canada has equity. the potential to be that attractive I think, market. I think, so, oh, so I think also... Hopefully. If you if you watch the if, you, if you've watched the interviews for those viewing with Diana Matheson and Kristen Sinclair, or just to go back, the CPL started as quoted a, a development league for Canadians, which is what's needed. That's fine. That's what the men's side needs or needed at the time, and what still kind of needs the MLS as well as a development league. You play that league to move over to Europe, or you come here to retire. Mm -hmm. The way Kristen mm -hmm. Sinclair and Diana Diana Matheson. I keep starting over their names for some reason. The way that they describe the league, by br they said they wanted to bring in a bunch of Canadian national te women's team members yeah. over to the league. They want to make, it sounds like they really want to make this league a staple, like one of the best leagues in the world or to rival the NWSL. They're ambitious with yeah. it. So I think just by the way that they're approaching along with the investors, just I think it helps, it helps the league so much, especially... Women's soccer has been slept on for so long, and you can argue like there's so many arguments to be made why people don't watch it. However, it's a different style of sport. Like my mom watches; she loves watching it because it's not just run head first into everyone like the English game is. It's a lot more technical. If you watch, if you watch, if you actually watch closely and you you know what ball is, then you're watching it not to see people run as fast as they can, but to actually watch them. Just a different yeah. way that the game is played because it's a beautiful game regardless of who plays yeah. it. The tempo, it's different for sure, too. Mm -hmm. and I feel like that brings a different vibe to the game, which I like it. Uh, I actually started watching for the first time for real when Jamal brought me to the World Cup. I think that was the first time I experienced watching a live women's match. Yes, um, same here. In 2015, my family went to watch Canada yeah. versus New Zealand. Ty zero zero. I, I I do want to mention. Uh, I I do want to mention. And yeah, wa wa watching the the women's World Cup in 2015 was amazing. But I do want to mention uh, very similar to other North American sports leagues is that there is talks to have a salary cap uh, on the on the the in in the women's league, sort of just to safeguard the uh, financial mm -hmm. sort of uh, yeah. viability for the team. So it's about 1.2 million per team. Okay. Uh, which, like, like going back to Felipe's point about the the pay, that should be enough, even as we speak, to attract pretty good players um, uh, to come play, uh, even even though it's kind of low. Um, but yeah, lots of exciting things to happen with the, the WPSL. Uh, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more updates on that. And um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You said it the best. Um, Stay tuned as well because I'm working on getting a, an, if I can even talk, I'm working on getting a uh, female viewer on or not a female, a female guest onto the podcast because she nice. has, she'll have brilliant insights that I think everyone would benefit from. But that's it. Just like Jamal said, make sure you're liking, subscribing, especially if you want to hear more and say goodbye to Felipe because he's going off to Egypt and leaving us for an actual warm country. I'll go to yeah. FA Cup. I'll bring. I'll bring our World of Soccer yeah. uh, gear uh, to the game. Rep. Send us some pictures. Right, it. All right, guys. Cool. I love you. I'll see you later. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy yeah. holidays. Merry Cheers. Christmas.